Hey, hi to everybody in South Africa, uh, whether you're South African or not, I just want to say it's awesome to be cycling again. For those that uh, haven't looked at the other videos, I'm cycling for you. And don't you think South Africa is beautiful? It's a bit dry at the moment, but it's awesome. And I'm busy riding on ground roads, um, especially to pray that you will get up, you will say something. Um, positive about South Africa and start to love again you know the Bible does say that love conquers all and I'm just going to swing this around to my face I just want to give you a short message what the Lord gave me and um, you can see the trucks that are coming around the corner and uh, I'm standing at a corner and I said uh, I don't feel very comfortable here but if I look at what's happening here I'm just going to show you what the pictures is that Lord gives me now, for some of you, this tower would mean absolutely nothing but a cell phone. And what is happening with me is God is using this as a signal beam to get through to you. To try and wake you up, to make you think and realize. But this is not just about you in South Africa. This is about everybody in South Africa. There's a lot of people with a lot of hate in our country. and We may not hate. We have to love. And uh, can you believe it? I'm just going to swing on to this and I hope you can see my Bible. Yes, I stick it inside here. It's the first time I've put my Bible in. I normally have just a verse that I take with me and then I speak on it. And today the Lord says to me, it's to take the Bible with you. And I'm going, oh, this is going to be interesting. Lord, what have you got up your sleeve? So um, <laughs> I'm, I'm just going <laughs> to, some of you will say he doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't carry have a sleeve. So yeah, just for those that are religious spirits, uh, don't stress about that one, okay? Um, just like when I said I saw Jesus and his eyes were blue, everyone was going, Ah! Jack, God doesn't have blue eyes! Um, God was flesh when he came to earth and then he was, he is actually spirit. So yeah, let's not argue that point, but um, <laughs> let's, let's enjoy the love of Christ. And uh, I just want to tell the Christians out there, let's start standing together. Let's not reprimand each other. Let's rather pray for that person. You might think you're right, but you might be just so wrong. And the other person might be just so right. So um, God did call me to speak to Israel and to pray for Israel. And he gave me a verse just before I left. And now I'm trying to find the verse. Isn't that awesome? And every time I go to the same place, that's not where I was before. Uh, uh, Okay, so I read it. I don't know what he wants to say, but he wants to say it. I'm just going to read Jeremiah 51. I don't like Jeremiah. I don't know if you guys like Jeremiah. But Jeremiah is a very, very strong prophet and very direct prophet. And he just said what the Lord said. Now, some of you don't like direct prophets in our country, but sometimes we need a direct prophet to be able to wake us up. I'm going to read Jeremiah 51. Verse 33, that's where my eyes are going. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the daughter of Babylon, is like a threshing floor. It's time to thresh her. Yet a little while, and the time of her harvest shall come. So, for me, Babylon, I believe God is, if, if I just think of the one portion in the Bible where he says, he's going to He's going to divide the wheat from the tear. We are going to have harvest time. And we are going to, if the laborers get up and do, we are going to see what God wants for this country. I don't know if you're positive, but I am. I'm very positive. I just know that God has called this nation. And I just want to do a little bit of a tricky. I don't know if I'll get it right. And uh, I might, you might see my face and you might not see my face again. But it's imperative, it's not important, that's not, not what it's all about. What it's about is me giving a message. How would you like to see a lot of pastors riding bicycles? That you're actually giving your offerings to the church and they come to church on a bicycle. I wonder how many will go to church then. <laughs> I'm looking forward to see um, evangelists and preachers rising up and being the true prophets of God. And maybe what I'm doing now is taking the Bible with me is really the Lord just saying, I want to see realness. I want to see real people. Um, yeah, and we all think these people are not so lucky because um, 
if you think of it nicely, when last did you see somebody on a bicycle that you actually look up to? It's all these very expensive cars that they ride and you all think that they are important um, and you know it's not about people that have that are important it's about God that's important and that's what God wants for our land is that we turn back to him so um, what I get and I know Jeremiah the story in Jeremiah 51 is totally much more than just what I've said now but I'm just taking what I saw what God gave me and I feel in South Africa please don't let Babylon control your thought pattern come on guys let us stand up and let us unite together and love our country love the people in our land and 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 so good seed so good seed um i'm going to zechariah three i think it's three no it's um zechariah four and the wind is blowing so excuse me i've got to hold one hand and two hands and the hand with the selfie stick and the everything and the angel that talked with me at Zechariah 4 and the angel that talked with me came again and walked me awake me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep and that's what I pray is that South Africans I pray today that your eyes will go open your ears will go open your heart will go open your mind will go open to what God is really doing in our land we think this is chaos yes there was a birth that God spoke about and he did speak that there is going to come um, birth pain so hello um, I have never seen a country stand up in one week's organizing a whole country standing up and going to the street there were some that did it right way and I thank you for those and I salute you I'm gonna take my hand and I'm gonna salute you like I would salute anybody that thank you and um, just thank you thank you thank you for the army of God that stood up and prayed that that's the only thing that's gonna work don't think you can go to the streets now and cause a riot because then you're doing copycat then you're doing what Satan wants you to do and he's gonna trap you if you're going on the 24th he's, Satan is waiting for you you better be prepared to go on your knees and pray um like Jehoshaphat God doesn't stop saying that and while I'm speaking just not to South Africa I'm speaking to the Jewish people as well I'm speaking to those in Israel because God is saying um this one in Zechariah where he says I will sh I will shake mine hand upon them and they shall be a spoil to their servants and he shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me and that is he says after it's where he says there in, in, in Zechariah 2 verses 6 um, I just want to tell you quickly this one he's giving me again for thus says the Lord of hosts after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you so ever the the Jewish people have gone to wherever they've dispersed God says his glory is upon you wherever you've gone so I'd like to call you back just to love God love him with all your heart um, Hashem loves you and you must love him and have a relationship with him just like you and I you don't know me but I want you to feel my heart because I love everybody that loves the God of the Bible and it doesn't mean I don't love you because you don't believe in the same religion as me I love you unconditionally but those that love the God of the Bible we must stand together that's what it is and um yeah and it says yeah after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations with who um which spoiled you for he that toucheth you touches the apple of he of of his eye if you take there's so many people that are so against the Jews but they've got no reason they don't I mean for years they've been fighting about ground let's take South Africa I think that's why the Lord's talking about Israel and South Africa we're fighting about the ground hello you're gonna die one day and then who's gonna fight off to the ground your grandchildren and then after your grandchildren it's your grand grandchildren but whose ground is this God gave it to us to look after he gave it to us to protect and he said okay and then when you die which we all are going to die one day and you either go to heaven or you go to hell and that is the choice you make either you love God or you don't love him so I want to speak here further <laughs> in Zechariah, Zechariah 4 it looks like I'm jumping around but I'm not God is bringing a powerful statement just like this signal sends out so that you can connect to Vodacom like I am connecting to Vodacom and right on the top there's a red light that's going out and it's most probably one of these senders these signal beams and everything get connected back to the God of the Bible get back to him because he is the God of love 
his. And I, I want to speak to the Afrikaans people quickly. As jy Afrikaans is, hierdie land is Godse land, is nie jou land, is nie niemandse land nie. Ons wil dit recht kry, ons is lief vir God. En God sal dit vir ons gee om op te pas. Dis al. Dis al, as jy kyk na Zimbabwe, hulle het beklaai oor die grond. Kyk wat doen Satan weer. Hy het het recht gekry in Zimbabwe en elke Afrika land. Ons met die Heere vraag, wat is sy strategie? Ons wil nie weer beklaai oor grond nie. Ons wil beklaai omdat ons lief is vir God. Ons wil sy naam lig. As hulle God uit die, uit die, ja, uit die kerke uithaal, want het gebeur, baie goed is gebeur na in die kerke. As hulle God uithaal uit die school uit, hulle haal God uit die huis uit, uit die families uit. Dis waar oor ons moet opstaan. Maar nie beklaai oor goed is wat nie godlik is nie. Dit gaan nie werk nie. I just want to say to everybody in this country, afternoon, <laughs> um, and I'm going to ask you in English. I just want to say to everybody in this country, it is time for Jesus to be lifted up and raised up. And for the Jewish people that don't know Jesus Christ, just want to tell you, I'm a Jew from Jewish descendant. My great granny was a Jew. And I became a Christian because I was born into a Christian family, but I was introduced to Jesus Christ. And the difference is, we love the same God of the Bible. Yes, Jesus came to die on the cross for us, and that is an awesome, awesome gift. But I just want to say to you, God said for the next 50 days, and it goes until the 3rd of December, that I'm going to speak to your hearts and call you and call you back. Call you back to him, because some of you have just disappeared, like the Christians, also just disappeared, gone off the path. So when I speak to the Jew, I speak to the Gentile as well. I speak to the Christian as well. And the Bible does say, first to the Jew and then to the Gentile. So I understand what these 50 days are. And they're challenging. Okay, let's get back to Zechariah 4. And the angel that talked with me came again. And he waked me. Can you imagine if you get woken by an angel? I think you shake. And I think it must be an awesome experience. Well, I've had it. And um, I thank God for those things that do happen. As a man that is awakened out of his sleep and said unto me, What seest thou? Can you imagine I'm here and I'm looking around me and I'm saying, what seest thou? Imagine if an angel comes now immediately, what seest thou? And it looks like rain in the background over there. And I look around me and I say, mm. and I said, I have looked and I've looked and I've looked. Mr. Jew, Mrs. Jew, Mr. Gentile, Mrs. Gentile, have you looked? Have you looked? I have looked and behold, a candlestick all of gold with a bowl upon the top of it and his seven lamps thereon and seven pipes through the seven lamps which are upon the top thereof and two olive trees by it one upon the right side of the bowl and the other upon the left side thereof so I answered and spoke to the angel that talked with me saying what are these my lord then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Anybody that's listening to this, maybe you can send me a comment at the bottom. Hi, how are you? <laughs> Good. You can send me a com comment at the bottom and say to me, Esther, oh, and by the way, don't forget to subscribe because then you can get all the videos um, that I'm sending out. And if you want audio, please just let me know on Facebook or Twitter or wherever you get my contact details. I'll give it to you later. Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Do you know what it is? Put a comment down at the bottom. What do you think it is? Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel. This is the word unto Israel. Because God is telling me, speak to Israel. So I have to speak to Israel. And then from the Jew to the Gentile and to South Africa, God is saying to South Africa, not by might, nor by power. Some of you know the verse. My dad used to quote it quite a lot. But by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who art thou, O great mountain, before Zerubbabel? Thou shalt become a plain and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shoutings, crying grace. Just a second for me. Got to grab the page here on the steering wheel. You don't believe that? Ah, there you go. 
new pulpit. How do you like that, South Africans? And every pastor that's standing by his pulpit every day. <laughs> I'm not saying your pulpit doesn't have to be smart. What I'm saying is let's get out into the highways and the byways. And let's get the message to the world. And so the wind is blowing my pulpit page. My page in the Bible on the pulpit. <laughs> You think I'm crazy. It's okay. You're going to see what this craziness does to our country. God said, go out and be obedient. I just do it. And he said, oh, great mountain before Zerubbabel. Oh, great mountain before Israel. Everybody that's against Israel. And that's including South African people. Even our leaders are busy coming against Israel. Hello. Oh, great mountain before Zerubbabel. Before Israel. Before South Africa. You name your country. Thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth a headstone thereof with shoutings, crying, Grace, grace unto it. <sighs> Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. His hands shall also finish it. So if God has called you to do something for this country, if God has called you to do something for the Jews, if God has called you to do something for Israel in any country or any nation, then you better start doing it. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid, laid the foundation of the house. His hand shall also finish it. And thou shalt know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. Okay. I just want to bring this picture to you. Whoever comes against Israel comes against the God of the Bible. Jesus was a Jew. He was born in flesh. He's God Almighty. He's the Son of the Father. The Father sent the Son, but He came down as God in flesh. Now, if you come against Israel, Jerusalem, you know, if you, you read, I think it's Psalm 122. I might be wrong. You can correct me. But it says they pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Why not peace of Israel? Because Jerusalem is God's one and only. It's a pointed place for his word to go forth. For him to speak to the nations. So yes, um, I see my time is going very, very quick. So I just want to say to you, I don't want to make this too long. I just want to say that God is watching Israel at this stage. God is watching every Jew across the nations. And I, I, I'm praying that, I'm praying for you now and I'm going to take a cycle and I'll make another video of me praying because this one is quite long at the moment. But it's really about God hearing our prayers. Like this satellite dish up here or whatever you want to call it for Vodacom tiles. We are each individual, a lighthouse, a satellite dish for Jesus to work through. Come, let's stand up. Let's be that satellite Let's be that aerial that God needs here in South Africa. And we can change our country through love and spreading the good news of Jesus Christ. Thank you for watching. Love you all. And um, yeah, I'm going to pray for the Jewish people with the next run. And uh, I see the sun is setting. Isn't it awesome to see the sun rising and sun setting in South Africa? And I want to pray especially for Netanyahu today. So I'm going to run another one. I'm going to pray for the Jewish people all over the world. And then I'm going to pray for you, the Gentiles. So go to the next video, which I'm going to shoot um, and for you to watch. Blessings. Love you. My name is Esther Bardenhorst. Get me on Esther.Bardenhorst, number one. Or you can watch me on YouTube. Esther, sorry, that first one is Facebook. Or you can watch me, Esther Bardenhorst, on YouTube. Subscribe so that you can follow me. Like me so you can follow me. And um, yeah, let's communicate and um, let's see what God wants you to do. God is calling for hope houses. That's houses of prayer everywhere. H-O-P-E. Houses of prayer everywhere. And we're going to bring prayer and action into our country through love. We're not going to have battlefield. We don't want a battlefield. This is a mission field. South Africa needs to spread the good news to the world. Love you. God bless you. Bye-bye.